It is now time for oral questions. The member for Markham Unionville has informed me he has a point of order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm seeking unanimous consent from members to wear purple ribbons to recognize Lupus Awareness Day. The member for Markham Unionville is seeking the unanimous consent of the House to wear purple ribbons in uh, recognition of Lupus Day. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Okay. It is now time for oral questions. And I recognize the member for Brampton Centre. My question is uh, for the Premier. When the government announced, uh, first announced plans to eliminate 42 of Ontario's 52 land ambulance services, the Ford government claimed that paramedics should be happy about the changes that will actually improve service. Now the Premier has also cut funding for emergency ambulance services. Does he believe that this funding cut will, uh, to uh, our services will spark joy and improve the services here in our province? Questions to the Premier. Well, through, through you, uh, Mr. Speaker, that, that's, that's not accurate, but uh, I'll tell you what's accurate. Mr. Speaker, on June the 7th, this province voted for change. They voted for a government to come in there and be fiscally responsible, and on June the 15th, the first thing we did, we announced we would scrap the cap-and-trade carbon tax, a carbon tax that is now implemented from the federal government that jacked up the gas prices, jacked up heating costs, jacked up everything in the stores. Matter of fact, there was a convenience store we went into and he was there repricing all the goods because of this terrible, terrible carbon tax. On June the 21st, Mr. Speaker, we saved 7,500 jobs at the Pickering Nuclear yeah, Generating yeah. Station. That's 7,500 families that would have been out of work that the NDP and the Liberals wanted to close Response. it down. I was just wondering where they were getting the uh, energy from, but they don't worry about that, Mr. Speaker. They don't worry about the hydro bills that are the highest in North America. They implemented a plan to destroy the energy system in this province. Thank you. <laughs> Supplementary question. Thank you, Speaker. Across the province, people who run our ambulance services are warning about the risks of this health care cut. As Ottawa emergency services scrambled to deal with flooding, they admitted they'll have to revisit plans to hire paramedics needed to maintain response times. In Leeds, Grenville, the paramedic chief is advising to delay plans to build a new paramedic station that they desperately need. In Barrie, one paramedic was crystal clear. Cuts will ultimately result in longer response times. Why is the Premier making health care cuts that will leave families in our province waiting longer for the emergency care they need? Premier. Through you, Mr. Speaker, once again, that's not accurate, but I'll tell you what is accurate. On June the 27th, we committed to building a memorial honoring the heroes of the war in Afghanistan. We support our military, unlike the opposition that the leader of the opposition during the election had anti-poppy people, anti-war people, anti-military, anti-police, but just stood by and let her caucus run around and criticize the military and our police. On June the 30th, we reformed OHIP to support the people in greatest need. There are so many people in greatest need out there, but we reformed the o OHIP program through our all-star Minister of Health. On July the 11th, Order. we removed the CEO Order. and the Board of Governors of Hydro One. They're done. They're gone. Response. We have to restructure Hydro to make sure all the people that I met, all the people I met on the campaign trail in tears about their Hydro bill, we're making changes at Hydro One, and we are. Thank you. Thank you. Final supplementary. Speaker, every day the Ford government makes the ridiculous claim that they haven't cut health care, and every day another news story breaks about health care cuts to ambulance services, to public health, to telemedicine, or to our OHIP services. Families in this province need to know that they can get affordable and reliable care when they need it. Why is this government chipping away at the services that families in our province rely on? Premier. Well, I, I understand, Mr. Speaker, that they aren't very good with the figures over on the other side, but when you look at the budget that's open to the world to look at, yeah. you see $1.3 billion more being spent in health care. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not too sure how they're, they're adding their numbers up. And again, another uh, inaccurate statement from the opposition, Mr. Speaker. 
We cancelled a wasteful energy contracts totaling $790 million that were on the backs of every single Ontario resident that's paying their, their hydro, Mr. Mr. Speaker. We demonstrated leadership on the illegal border crossing crisis, and it's a crisis because 40,000 illegal border crossers ended up, vast majority, here in, in Toronto. We can't handle the infrastructure. We're trying to take care of our own people here. But guess what, Mr. Speaker? The federal government owes us $200 million. I haven't heard a peep a word from the City of Toronto about the $200 million. That they, they would get a big chunk of that, Mr. Speaker, because they're carrying the burden as well. So we're going to make sure we— Thank you. Thank you. The next question, the member for Comiskaming Cochrane. My question is to the Premier. Unbelievable. Ambulance services are just one of the costs that the Ford government is further down low to municipalities. And across Ontario, those municipalities are scrambling to deal with the government's decision to walk away from funding everything from those ambulance services to flood prevention. That only means that municipalities have to cover that funding gap with service cuts or property tax hikes or both. How high a property tax hike does the Premier think is appropriate for his downloads? Questions to the Premier. Mr. Speaker. To the uh, member of provincial parliament that just asked the question, where was he for the last 15 years as they dismantled, they destroyed one of the most prosperous provinces in the entire country? They were nowhere. They're worrying about that. As, as gas prices went up, as heating costs went up, as everything went up, our debt went up over $200 billion. They were side by side. 98% of the time, they were supporting the uh, the Liberal government. Yep, I, I can tell you. So what we did when we found out we were inheriting a bankrupt province on July the 17th, we commissioned a line by line audit of government spending from one of the big five accounting firms Opposition for third party order. verification. You know, Mr. Speaker, socialism that they believe in, they believe in the socialist mentality doesn't work anywhere in the world. You can't keep digging into the pockets of the people that are working in the factories, yep. working in the offices. Yep. Socialism does not work. Stop the clock. I'm going to ask the member for Hamilton East Stony Creek to come to order and the member for Essex to come to order. Start the clock. Supplementary question. Once again to the Premier. Almost every day since the Ford government's budget was revealed, municipal leaders have had to deal with a new cut. A cut to municipal transit transfers, a cut to the municipal partnership fund, cuts to public health units, cuts to ambulance services, cuts to library services, cuts to municipal child care spaces, cuts to tourism agencies. How can the Premier pretend that downloading all these costs onto municipalities doesn't mean tax hikes and service cuts for families across Ontario. Premier. Through you, Mr. Speaker, I just want to remind the opposition they were involved and schemed, I'll tell you, the largest tax hikes this province has ever, ever seen on businesses, on the average person working hard. Mr. Speaker, they understand one thing. Order. They understand one thing is continue to tax people and continue to waste taxpayers' money. Zero accountability. On July the 17th, because they were spending and they were making the backroom deals with their cronies and all their buddies, July the 17th, we launched an independent financial commission yeah, of inquiry yeah. to find out who was getting rich off the backs of the taxpayers. And that's a real, that was a real eye-opener for the taxpayers. Yeah, yeah. On July the 18th to the 20th, showed national leadership at the Council of Federation. We had an agreement from all provinces Response. to make sure that the federal government's held accountable on the illegal immigration to pay back the $200 million. It wasn't just me, Mr. Speaker. It was every single premier in this province. Thank you. The final supplementary. Once again to the Premier, families expect governments to work together to ensure that they have the services they need, whether it's reliable transit, vaccinations, or library books. Instead, they have a Premier who is basically walking out of the restaurant 
and leaving mayors and councillors to deal with the bill. That's right. Why can't the Premier actually work with municipal leaders to solve these problems instead of being the one that creates them and also being the one who even refuses to answer the questions regarding these issues? That's right. Thank you, Speaker. Premier. Through, through you, Mr. Speaker, another inaccurate statement. On July the 19th, Mr. Speaker, we fought for the automotive jobs and, and trade talks in Washington, D.C. In Washington, D.C., and I'll tell you what, what the big five automotive uh, folks said, that the high hydro rates that they supported are killing automotive jobs. The, the, the head of the unions were killing automotive jobs. There's places all over North America to produce cars. We need to make sure that we create Position the environment for companies to thrive in the automotive sector. We supported new lowering bond project by cutting red tape. It was full of red tape. As we know, we have 385,000 regulations created by the NDP, created by the Liberals, to stifle, stifle jobs, to stifle entrepreneurs from getting ahead in life. But we put an end to that and we cut red tape. We introduced legislation to end the cap and trade carbon tax once and for all. Now we have the federal. Thank you. Thank you. The next question, the member for Brampton Centre. Thank you, Speaker. <clears throat> My question is uh, to the Premier. Yesterday, our leader, the leader of the official opposition, tabled a resolution to officially declare a climate emergency here in Ontario. Across the province, we are seeing the devastating toll that climate change is taking on our communities, our environment, and our economy. Increasing instances of natural disasters like tornadoes, forest fires, and floods are te tearing through Ontario at an alarming rate threatening lives, displacing families, and contributing to millions of dollars in damage. Recognizing the very real threat climate change poses to our province shows that we are committed to taking immediate, decisive action to protect our people and the environment. Will the Premier support our motion to declare a climate emergency in Ontario? Questions to the Premier. I'll tell you one of the biggest climate crises right now is burning the backs of businesses, burning the backs of the people day in and day out with this terrible, terrible carbon tax. We proved to the federal government we don't need a carbon tax to be environmentally friendly. Our Minister of Environment has put together a solid plan, a great plan, to make sure we're environmentally conscious, to make sure we go after the big emitters. That's accurate, Mr. Mr. Speaker. But we cancelled, and this is what destroyed the energy. The energy policies Opposition that they supported, the along with the Liberals, destroyed this province. We cancelled the White Pines Wind Project and made a lot of people happy in uh, Minister Smith's area and across the province. It's unfortunate we can't cancel the rest of them. Driving up costs anywhere from 14 cents per kilowatt up to 40 Response. cents. They're gouging the people. There's never been a bigger transfer of wealth yep. from the hardworking people of Ontario to the political insiders than this energy project and these women. Thank you. Supplementary question. Thank you, Speaker. This resolution reflects the priorities of communities Canada-wide. Cities like on Ottawa, Vancouver, Halifax, Hamilton, and Kingston have all actually taken the same step. They all know that ignoring the threats of climate change will not stop it from destroying our communities. The Premier himself has even admitted that climate change is real and that it is contributing to the devastating floods that we're seeing in Ontario right now. So it's hard to understand what there is to disagree about here. Will the Premier stand by his word, listen to Ontarians, and support this motion that would make Ontario the first legislature in Canada, Speaker, to declare a climate emergency, yes or no? Premier. Well, the biggest crisis, uh, Mr. Speaker, it, it's real. You know something? It's real, Mr. Speaker. I'll wait until they finish that. Mr. Speaker, yes, it's real. But do you know what's real as well? Their energy policies that they supported the Liberal government lost 300,000 jobs. There's 300,000 families that couldn't pay the bills. They couldn't pay their hydro bills. They couldn't pay their rent. They couldn't pay their mortgage because of their policies. Yeah. We believe in climate change, but we also believe in supporting companies and people to create jobs. And the carbon tax is the worst single tax you can put on the backs of the people of Ontario. On July the 26th, 
York University, they were holding the students host hostage. To, it's kind of similar to what's going on now, holding students hostage. But, Mr. Speaker, at York University, we legislated them back to work, yeah. get the students back into the classrooms, because we knew it was the right thing to do for the people of York University and the, and the students. We announced a better local government act, making sure that across the board that they're accountable. See you later, buddy. It's a good one. And the rest of you. Order. 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 And stop the clock. The member for Hamilton East Stony Creek will come to order. Start the clock. The next question, the member for Simcoe North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Premier. This spring, many regions in Ontario were hit with incredible flooding that caused havoc in our communities. Our hearts go out to the families that have had their lives turned upside down by these floods. I'd like to thank the Premier for the strong leadership he has displayed. He's visited affected communities and met with municipalities to ensure the people of Ontario know our government stands with them. In fact, our entire team has stepped up during this very challenging time. We want every Ontarian to know that you have our government's full support during this most difficult time. Mr. Speaker, can the Premier speak about a few of the Ontario businesses that are doing their part for Ontario during this flood? The question is to the Premier. Well, I want to thank I want to thank the member from Simcoe North doing a great job in the Simcoe area. She's absolutely loved them in that area, so thank you for the question. Mr. Speaker, I've been, I've been up north of Muskoka. I'll probably be up there again this weekend talking to the local three mayors. And I want to, first of all, thank the essential service folks out there, the emergency uh, folks that all came together around uh, the table, supported, supported the community, but most important, the 2,000 Canadian Armed Forces who've been instrumental in helping people fill the sandbags, making sure that people feel secure there, and they're just incredible heroes in this country, and we're so fortunate to have them. Mr. Speaker, Hydro One has waived all uh, reconnection fees. Uh, usually, it's typically $400 to reconnect. They've cancelled all those Response. fees, and uh, Ottawa Hydro has done the same. So we want to thank Hydro One. We want to thank Ottawa Hydro to making life a little bit easier for the people that have been infected in the flooded areas. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Supplementary question. Thank you, Speaker, and thank you to the Premier for his answer. Rising water levels have pushed many Ontarians out of their homes. Many more have seen significant damage to their property. This is a devastating situation, but I know our government is dedicated to assisting the people of Ontario in this trying time. Mr. Speaker, some members of this House have undoubtedly heard concerns from flood-affected residents that the Electrical Safety Authority would be charging them a $400 fee to reconnect their electricity. To put it simply, this is an unfair burden to place on Ontarians who have seen their homes and businesses damaged or destroyed by flooding. Speaker, could the Premier please explain what actions our government is taking to ensure residents in flood-affected areas are not subjected to further costs? Premier. Uh, Minister of Government Services. Minister of Government and Consumer Services. Thank you, Speaker. Through you, I want to thank my honourable colleague, the member from Simcoe Norris, for the great work she does in this very important question. Mr. Speaker, I want to first express my deepest sympathies to all those families who are affected by the recent flooding in Ontario. I know my thoughts and the thoughts of everyone this, in this House are with them. I can only imagine how difficult it is to be displaced from their home in such a devastating way. For too many people, restoring their property after a flood can create significant hardship both emotionally and financially. That's why I'm pleased to report that the Electrical Safety Authority will be waiving the reconnection fee for restoring electrical services in flood-damaged areas. I've been informed by the ESA that a full refund will be provided for anyone who has already paid this fee. I want to take a moment to let insurance know that they can contact ESA's Customer Service Centre by calling 1-877-372-7233. 
Mr. Speaker, our government is committed to working with the dedicated staff on the ground and our partners in emergency services to ensure the safety and well-being of residents. I'm glad to see the ESA joining us in those efforts. Finally, I want to personally thank all the responders, first responders, utilities, and service providers for supporting affected communities across Ontario during this difficult time. Thank you, Speaker. Here, here. The next question, the member for Essex. Thank you very much, Speaker. My question is to the Premier. Speaker, the Premier knows or should know that in a democracy, people can and should visit their local MPP when there are issues that concern them. That's why it was shocking to see the MPP for Niagara West call the police on a group of about 15 book club members and former librarians who visited the constituency office to raise concerns about library cuts. Seniors. Speaker Janet Hodgkins, a book club member and a retired librarian who worked at the Welland Public Library for 28 years, told the press, and I quote, I don't think we look threatening. Speaker, does the Premier believe that this group of retired librarians posed a threat that required police intervention? Questions to the Premier. Through, through, through you, Mr. Speaker, the only people that uh, pose a threat to the people of Ontario are their policies, the NDP yeah, and the right Liberals' there. policies for the last 15 years. That's 15 the years their policies have destroyed this province. Resistance and chaos. On August the 2nd, on August the 2nd, Mr. Speaker, we challenged the federal carbon tax in court. But I can tell you, Mr. Speaker, win, lose, or draw in court, the people will decide in October where this carbon tax is going. Yep. It's not going to be the courts. It will be the people of this country. Here, here. And you see the blue sweep going right across this country. I think the feds need to wake up and smell the roses. Yep. On August the 7th, one of their favorites, we issued a buck of beer challenge, and people took Opposition us up on buck of beer challenge. The places were sold out of every store that sold it. That was on August 7th. On August 8th, we responded to the forest fire crisis. We went up there. We made sure we put the resources needed to fight the forest fire. Thank you. Order. Supplementary. Thank you very much, Speaker. I'm uh, disappointed. The uh, Premier had an opportunity to show leadership in his answer, and he did not take that opportunity at all, Speaker. <laughs> Speaker. <laughs> Speaker, the government side should remember that we all answer to the people of Ontario, and talking to constituents is a part of this job, not something that requires a police escort. So it should go without saying. Speaker, government side, come our to order. Police, Speaker, our police have better things to do, and constituents deserve to be heard, and no one should be calling the police on retired librarians politely raising concerns. Speaker, will the Premier do the right thing, show some leadership in his answer, and instruct the member to make a formal apology, and if he refuses, Question. will the Premier do so on his behalf? Thing comes to happen. Members, please take your seats. Premier, to reply. Not so rich, so ironic. Who talks to their constituents? I made five constituent calls in your area, by the way, 519 area code today. They're concerned about Essex. Once they find out the voting record, how they voted down all the tax breaks and all the incentives, there might be a different story, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Mr. Speaker, on August the 9th, we invested $25 million to fight guns and gangs. We, we saw an increase in shootings. It took us a few days to get the check over there to be implemented, and they're fighting guns and gangs now, Mr. Speaker. On August the 13th, we announced the cannabis retail model following federal legalization of cannabis. The previous government wanted to unionize it all, Opposition make sure order. their buddies get their cut of the, the pie as well. We thought it'd be better to let entrepreneurs thrive and prosper, open their own stores and create jobs themselves rather than being tied to the unions. As the NDP, that's who runs it. Thank you. The member for Etobicoke Centre. Mr. Speaker, our government was elected on a promise that we would return Ontario to fiscal order. And as we now know, 
the interest on the debt accumulated by the Liberal government is the single largest cut to frontline services in Ontario's history. Over the past few months, the government has been taking steps to reduce expenditures while investing in the people. For example, our CARE tax credit will provide about 300,000 families with up to 75 per cent of their eligible child care expenses. We have taken this action while working carefully and diligently to manage expenditures while protecting our frontline services. Can the President of the Treasury Board please tell this House how our government continues to work for the people of Ontario? President of the Treasury Board. Well, th thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you to the member from Etobicoke Centre. Uh, what a great riding. That's where uh, I knocked on doors with the great late uh, Michael Wilson for many years in the 80s. So thank you for the work that you continue to do in the tradition of uh, Michael Wilson. Understand, uh, Mr. Speaker, Ontarians understand that we must right our fiscal ship yes. by spending $40 million more a day than we were taking in, inherited from the previous government. We were on a course to put things at risk that matter most to the people of Ontario, our health care system and our education system. Mr. Speaker, that's not, I, that's not ideology, that's math. Mr. Speaker, later today I will table in the House the estimates for 2019-2020. This milestone is another opportunity to gauge in an objective conversation about the future of our province, a conversation we are happy to have. It's time to return to the core commitment behind our plan, a promise to protect what matters most, Mr. Speaker. That's exactly what Response. we're doing, and we will make no apology for it, Mr. Here, Speaker. Here. Supplementary question. Thank you, Mr. President. It's clear that the previous government's spending practices have taken their toll on our province. Instead of making critical investments to enhance economic growth, the previous government increased government spending and wasted billions of dollars. This was done at the expense of hard-working Ontarians. You would think that with all of that spending, the services and programs that the people of Ontario depended on would have improved dramatically, but they didn't. The only thing that the people got more of was debt and mismanagement of hard-earned tax dollars. This is unacceptable. Mr. Speaker, can the President of the Treasury Board inform the House on what the government is doing to repair the damage that was done by the previous Liberal government and bring relief to the people of Ontario? Once again, the President of the Treasury Board. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Our government understands that reducing the burden of everyday expenses can make a huge difference in the lives of the people of Ontario. That's why we fought through the great leadership of the Minister of Energy and his partner, the Minister of Environment, to fix the hydro mess so that more money stayed in the pockets of hardworking Ontarians. Mr. Speaker, that's why we are working to bring over $2 billion through the hard work of the Minister of Finance, through our new, no, new low-income individual and family tax credit, Mr. Speaker. And that's why we invested $1.6 billion to protect teacher jobs while boards align class sizes with other Canadian jurisdictions through the hard work of our Minister of Education. Mr. Speaker, we are protecting what matters most while we restore fiscal balance to this province. Ontarians deserve a better, brighter future. And that's what we are building Response. without apology and with tremendous care. Thank yeah. you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. The next question, the member for London West. Thank you, Speaker. My question is to the Premier. Speaker, five employment service agencies in London have been forced to lay off a dozen staff because of a $2 million funding cut that took effect April 1st. About half the cut is the result of this government's cancellation of two province-wide programs focused on young people. Yay. The Employing Youth Talent Incentive, which provided subsidies for small business to hire youth, and the Youth Job Link. The loss of these programs will hurt hundreds of vulnerable youth in London and thousands more across the province. Speaker, with the summer job season upon us and with so many Ontario youth struggling to find employment, why is this government eliminating programs that are specifically designed to help young people gain skills and valuable job experience? Good question. The question was addressed to the Premier. For you, Mr. Speaker, do you know what our employment program is? creating jobs, yeah, which would yeah. create 123,000 private sector jobs. 
Mr. Speaker, we, we have a labor shortage. There's so many jobs out there. Anyone who's healthy and physically able to work can go out there and get a job tomorrow. Every company I talk to that needs people, no matter what sector it is, Mr. Speaker, we have created the environment to thrive and prosper in this great province. Before, we lost 300,000 jobs, Mr. Speaker. But when it came on August the 15th, Mr. Speaker, we ensured greater transparency and accountability at Hydro One. The $6 million man, he's done, he's gone. But guess what? Opposition we made sure work. the compensation was 300 percent lower for the next CEO. Not 300 percent lower is going in the pockets of ratepayers who pay their hydro bills. We announced nine new OPP attachments. We love our OPP. We love our place. I like the other. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to ask the Premier to withdraw. Withdraw. Supplementary question. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Again to the Premier. It's not only youth jobs and small businesses that are under attack. This government is also gutting funding for startups and innovative companies by as much as 50 per cent. Speaker, the supports available to early stage firms are what keeps these companies here in Ontario. Without these supports, they can and will go elsewhere. In particular, cuts to Ontario centres of excellence will mean the loss of vital scale-up investment for later stage businesses which is known to be the biggest gap in Ontario's innovation ecosystem. These businesses will simply leave to find investors. Speaker, other than signs on the border, does this government have any plan to keep high potential firms in Ontario creating jobs for Ontarians? The Premier Colleges and Universities. Minister of Training, opposite for that question. Our government was elected with a strong mandate to restore trust and accountability in Ontario's finances and respect for tax dollars. I'll repeat that. Respect for tax dollars and for the hardworking people that work so hard to earn those dollars. We as a government are being financially responsible so that we can protect what matters most. Our government is committed to delivering core services by focusing on putting the people first and ensuring that we are getting the best value for money. We looked at the employment service providers, and many of them were not delivering on their targets. The people of Ontario expect their tax dollars to deliver results and not just Fox. maintain the status quo for the sake of maintaining the status quo. We are delivering on our promise to the people of Ontario to make Ontario open for business. The next question. Start the clock. The next question, the member for Guelph. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is for the Premier. For years, the Ontario Municipal Board cost citizens and taxpayers millions of dollars. It's bad enough that deep-pocketed developers use the OMB to overturn local planning decisions. It's even worse that millions of tax dollars were wasted on these judicial disputes. In Guelph alone, the OMB hearings cost cities' taxpayers more than $1 million in three years. Reviving the old OMB rules is a massive transfer of power and money from taxpayers to big developers. Mr. Speaker, why is the Premier showing such disrespect for taxpayers by reviving an old OMB system that took so much money out of their pockets to overturn the decisions citizens made? Questions to the Premier. Uh, Minister of Finance. To the Minister of Finance. Uh, thank you. Well, first of all, the, the member's uh, statements, uh, Speaker, do not reflect the facts. In fact, what we are doing for the taxpayers, let me tell you the choices that we made. We've chosen to invest in projects like $90 million in free dental care for 100,000 low-income seniors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
We've, we've chosen to invest $1.75 billion to build 15,000 long-term care beds. That's what we're doing for the taxpayer. We've chosen to invest $2 billion to fund up to 75 per cent of childcare for 300,000 families. We've chosen to invest $2 billion so that low-income earners no longer pay any provincial income tax. We've chosen to invest $1 billion to add 30,000 childcare uh, spaces in our schools. That's what we have chosen to do for the taxpayers of Ontario. Restart the clock. Supplementary. Mr. Speaker, it would have been nice if the minister had actually answered the question I'd asked. We understand, we understand that you've chosen, you've chosen to dismantle programs that would fiscally responsibly prevent disasters, eliminating tree planting and flood protection. But you've also chosen, through Bill 108, to bring back OMB rules that resulted in a massive transfer of money and power to big developers. Government side, Mr. come to order. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, can the Premier tell or the Minister tell this House and the people of Ontario how much money in anticipated legal fees bringing back the OMB rules will cost municipal governments and municipal taxpayers? Response, Minister of Finance. Thank you. Well, I can tell you how many jobs we've created in Ontario since we began. Climate, the business climate that we have put out has created 123,000 jobs since we were elected. And that's done by cutting $880 million from the cap and trade carbon tax. That's done by freezing minimum wage at $14, giving businesses a chance to catch up and save $1.3 billion, which they've reinvested and hired those people. We, we froze WSIB fees by saving and saved $1.4 billion for the business community, who've reinvested that money and hired 123,000 people. We've, we've invested $1.4 billion in the accelerated capital cost. Businesses reinvested that money and hired 123,000 people. We froze the Liberal $300 million Liberal tax. The businesses took Response. that money, reinvested it in businesses, and hired 123,000 people since we got elected. That's what we've been doing. Stop the clock. Order. 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 Member for Hamilton East, Stony Creek has to come to order. Member for Mississauga Streetsville has to come to order. Member for Ottawa South needs to come to order. Start the clock. The next question, the member for Willowdale. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question this morning is for the Minister of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade. This morning, I joined the Minister in the great riding of Willowdale to bring attention to the harm the federal carbon tax is doing to small businesses. Our government has been doing everything we can to create an environment where job creators can thrive. Unfortunately, the federal government is doing exactly the opposite. They have imposed a job-killing carbon tax in Ontario on Ontario businesses and Ontario families. Small businesses, in particular, are being hurt by the Liberal carbon tax. The people running these businesses, Mr. Speaker, aren't billionaires, they are, and they're certainly not going uh, to climate conferences in their private jets. They're hard-working people just trying to make ends meet. Could the minister please expand on how the federal carbon tax is harming small businesses across Ontario? 
The Minister of Economic Development, Job Creation and Trade. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. It was great to be with the member from Willowdale in his riding this morning talking about the devastating effects that the federal carbon tax will have on small business. Since we were elected in June, our government's been doing everything we can, working tirelessly, Speaker, to create an environment where businesses want to grow, invest, and create jobs. But the federal government is doing everything that they can to hold Ontario back. Their carbon tax is hurting all businesses, small, medium, and large, with small businesses being hit the hardest, like Drury's Variety that we were at this morning. The CFIB has found that nearly half of carbon tax revenues, half of them, will be coming from small businesses. Speaker. These businesses aren't able to absorb these kinds of costs, and they're going to have to cut back as a result. Half of the CFIB members say the carbon tax is pressuring them to freeze or cut salaries for their workers Response. and causing them to delay investments in their business. Mr. Speaker, Justin Trudeau and the federal government have a track record of hurting small business Shame. and his carbon tax is no different mr Shame. speaker Shame. supplementary question Thank you, and through you, Mr. Speaker, thanks to the Minister for his answer. I was also joined by the Minister of Environment, uh, Converse, Conservation and Parks, who spoke at length uh, about the progress our province has made to reduce emissions without a tax. It's clear that through great sacrifice and the meaningful efforts of individuals and small business, like Drury Variety, our province has done its fair share to fight climate change and reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Unfortunately, the federal government fails to grasp this concept. They believe that the only way to fight climate change is with a regressive carbon tax. Justin Trudeau continues to force his carbon tax on the people of this very proud province. Their carbon tax is hurting all businesses, Mr. Speaker, with small business being hit the hardest. Could the minister please Question. explain what the sacrifices of Ontario's hardworking people have accomplished so far? Minister to reply. Uh, minister of Environment, Speaker. Minister of Environment, Conservation and Parks. Mr. Speaker, through you to the member, and thank you for the question. Thank you for the great work that he does, and thank you as well to the uh, Minister of Economic Development, Trade and Job Creation for joining us today. You know, we've spoken in this legislature, Mr. Speaker, about what Ontario has done, and and the, uh, the the report came out, the new report from the National Inventory, just two weeks ago. While Ontario has reduced greenhouse gases by 22 percent, the rest of Canada has gone up six percent. But you know, Mr. Young, who owns Drury Variety, he understands that because he knows that in addition to the $1,000 a year that Justin Trudeau's carbon tax will add, in addition to that, the, move that's, the moves that have already been made to move us to a low emissions economy, they have cost Mr. Mr. Young and other small businesses $435 a month, Mr. Speaker, $5,000 a year. That's an investment that businesses have already made. That's why our Made in Ontario plan focuses on Bots. not a penalizing, job-killing carbon tax tax, but other pragmatic measures that will help us meet our targets, but not hurt families and not hurt businesses. The next question, the member for Davenport. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This question is for the Premier. It was clear from the start that the government's so-called education consultation was nothing more than a public relations exercise. The real plan for massive cuts and lost jobs was being hatched behind closed doors. This so-called consultation asked about improving outcomes in math, but their plan adds distraction of large classes and takes away teaching supports. The so-called consultation talked about getting kids into technology, engineering, and the skilled trades, but their plan is cancelling courses in technology, robotics, and shop. Given the turmoil the government has brought to our schools, does the Premier think this million-dollar survey was money well spent? Someone needs to reply on behalf of the government. Minister of Finance. <coughs> Minister of Education. Referred to the Minister of Education. The results of this consultation has informed us for education policy for years to come, and we've listened. We are investing like never before. We're investing in our capital investments in terms of schools, re school repairs, and builds across this province. $13 billion over the next 10 years. We heard loud and clear from the consultations that our students were graduating without the job skills they required. We are investing in math curriculum so we can get back to the fundamentals and get them back on track. We are supporting teachers as well in that regard so that 
that they have the skills to teach the math fundamentals that our students have missed over the last 15 years. We listened through that consultation and found that parents want to be included and engaged in curriculum, and we are making sure Spots. that happens. Speaker, that curriculum has given us so much opportunity to continue to listen and properly invest like never before, so ultimately that classroom is the best Thank you. Supplementary question. Mr. Speaker, the parents are actually saying they're outraged by your cuts, Minister. Yeah. Speaker, the Premier is forcing school boards to find cuts in the classroom in the name of efficiency, while his own so-called consultation came in 300 per cent over budget. But if they want some free feedback on their education plan and its impact, Speaker, they don't have to look very far. Just ask one of the 23 teachers declared redundant in Simcoe County last week, despite growing enrollment, or the counselors and speech-language pathologists let go in Halton. Or oh, ask one of the students at Brampton Centennial, who will lose 30 courses options next year. But of course, this government shut the door on students yesterday, so they sure aren't listening to students. Mr. Speaker, it doesn't take a million dollars to find out that students, parents Question. and education workers are united against these cuts. Will the Premier listen? Yeah. Questions have occurred to the Minister of I want to remind that our, our purpose in getting education right is making leader. sure that parents yeah, know they've been listened to, and we've done that loud and clear. We're investing $1.6 billion in attrition protection funding. We're investing $90 million in increased spending in special education. We're increasing our investment in student transportation by $92 Order. million. Speaker, in our budget, we've dedicated an increase of $700 million in Ontario education alone. And again, we're looking at over $1 billion in extra new child care spaces, uh, 30,000 spaces, of which 10,000 will be in schools. Speaker, our investments are very, very clear in demonstrating that through that consultation, we've listened to what matters and what's important, Order. and we're protecting what matters most. And our investments Spons. that we're demonstrating is absolutely clear. We're getting it right. Another example would be in terms of school renewals, school here, here. repairs. We're investing, again, committing another $1.4 billion. Speaker, Thank you. Next question, the member for Aurora Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill. Thank you very much, Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Training, Colleges and Universities. Speaker, I've heard from many constituents who are frustrated with the complex, convoluted and constraining system set up by the previous government and the Ontario College of Trades. They're frustrated with the red tape and stifling regulation that the previous skilled trade framework created and the lack of action by the previous government to make life easier for tradespeople in Ontario. That's why I was so pleased to see that our government introduced a plan to modernize the skilled trades in Ontario. Would the minister tell us how the government's modernization of the skilled trades will help make Ontario open for business and open for jobs? Minister of Training, Colleges and Universities. Thank you, Speaker, and, and thank you very much to the member uh, from Aurora, Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill for his uh, question and for his great work on behalf of his constituents. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Speaker, unlike the NDP, our government is committed to making Ontario open for business by reducing the burden on skilled workers. Our Modernizing the uh, Skilled Trades and Apprenticeship Act, if passed, will create a flexible system for the skilled trades in Ontario. It will reduce red tape for employers and apprentices. It will streamline service delivery and help promote the tremendous career opportunities that the skilled trades offer. This new framework will allow our workforce to respond to the demands of the job market, ensuring that Ontario is open for business and open for jobs. Thank you, Speaker. Supplementary question. Thank you, Speaker, and thank you to the Minister for the answer. Speaker, I'm thrilled that we're taking decisive action to make life easier for our tradespeople, whether they're an, an apprentice or journey person. I know that this will come as a relief to many of my constituents, and it will make Ontario open for business. 
Speaker, I have also heard from many constituents who are frustrated with the high membership fees charged by the Ontario College of Trades. Speaker, I heard this again and again as I travelled across Ontario and listened and consulted with the people. Would the minister tell us about what our government is doing to reduce the financial burden on tradespeople in our province, please? Minister to reply. Thank you, Speaker. And the member is absolutely right. The previous Liberal government increased fees on journey persons by 300%. Shame. Shame. Yet wages for tradespeople did not increase by 300% over that same period. And that is why we have eliminated membership fees for apprentices and reduced the annual membership fees for journey persons by 50%. These reductions will put more money back in the pockets of our tradespeople and encourage more people to pursue a career in the skilled trades. So I'm looking forward to the NDP supporting our government's actions. Thank you, Speaker. Next question, the member for Kingston and the Islands. Thank you, Speaker, and, and through you, my question is to the Acting Premier. This past week, the United Nations released a report stating there are a million species currently at risk of disappearing altogether. We are in the midst of the sixth great extinction on Earth and the only one caused by us. But instead of taking action to protect endangered species in Ontario, the Premier's newest scheme is going to allow developers, sprawl developers, to pay to break the law, to buy their way out of the Endangered Species Act. Under this government, Conservative government allies can now bulldoze previously protected areas and ignore best practices for development in Ontario. How can we preserve the natural diversity if we allow developers to pay to pave over protected areas? The Acting Premier. Minister of the Environment. Referred to the Minister of the Environment, Conservation and Parks. Mr. Speaker, I appreciate the opportunity for the member's question to talk about our Maiden Ontario Environment Plan. Mr. Speaker, it's a comprehensive plan. It is a plan that not only deals with climate, which we enjoy talking about in this right, but also deals with other important issues, including species at risk. We are taking definitive action to make improvements on a plan on 10 years, where even your own, your own House leader voted against the existing Species at Risk Act. The member, I'm sure that the members from Northern Ontario who are in the NDP caucus understand the challenges that put this put in front of business. That's why we brought back a more balanced approach, just like our approach to the environment in general. Balance. We believe that you can balance a healthy economy and a healthy environment, not with the highest carbon tax in the world, but, but with an approach that understands that human habitation and the habitation of endangered species can coexist. That's what your own House leader believed when this was passed 10 years ago. Why don't you talk to him about it? Thank you, Speaker, and through you again to the Acting Premier. We know the environmental sham is about opening up protected areas for the Premier's sprawl developer buddies. That is what it is about, and that is all it is about. It allows his developer friends to buy their way out of complying with the Endangered Species Act. It ignores science. It ignores best practices in development planning, and it moves us further away from the sustainable province we want to pass on to our children and our grandchildren. Families deserve better. Our children and grandchildren, they deserve better, Speaker. Who lobbied the Premier to allow developers to pay to pass endangered species protection laws? Members, please take your seats. Minister to reply again. Mr. Speaker, our approach, our science-based approach, will continue to protect species. But, but I don't have to reference your House leader. Speak to your former leader. Speak to Howard Hampton. He was at the conference that I was at in Sault Ste. Marie, and he stood up in front of the audience and talked about the essential need for changes to the Endangered Species Act to create that balance, once again, that balance you, that we talk about in our Made in Ontario Environment Plan, a balance when it comes to climate, not the highest carbon tax in the world, but a balance that hits our target, a balance when it comes to clean water. When 1,327 times the government you supported allowed sewage to be put into the clean waters and lakes in Ontario. 
We've stood up against that. We've said that municipalities will have to notify their, their constituents when that sewage is put in the water. Mr. Speaker, we're going to make a difference to the environment. We're not going to be dogmatic. We're not going to be ideological. We are going to protect the environment for Ontarians with a balanced plan, not the ideology of the NDP. Stop the clock. Order. Order. Next question, the member for Mississauga, Aaron Mills. Mr. Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Transportation. Last week, the Minister tabled a comprehensive piece of legislation that, if passed, will reduce the red tape, increasing safety on our roads highways and bridges to get Ontarians moving. During the election, our government for the people committed to reducing the gridlock and improving transit across Ontario to bring relief to all commuters. I am proud to say that the Minister of Transportation has made many significant announcements that will get the people of our province moving. We have announced highways expansions projects Go service expansions, the biggest subway expansion in the history, and so much more. Can the Minister of Transportation share some of the great initiatives that is in, are included in the Getting Ontario Moving Act? Minister of Transportation. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, and thank the member from uh, Mississauga, Aaron Mills, for that question. It's, that's a uh, great joy working with him day in and day out. And just last week, Mr. Speaker, I introduced the Getting Ontario Moving Act. It's, uh, as the member stated, it's quite a comprehensive piece of legislation that, if passed, will cut red tape for our province's job creators, keep our roads safe, and make it easier to deal with the MTO with those individuals throughout our province. Mr. Speaker, we are proposing changes that will build much-needed transit, reduce congestion, get commuters moving again. And some of the proposed measures in my bill include a administrative monetary penalty regime for improperly passing a school bus, increasing penalties for driving too slowly and failing to drive in the right-hand side of the, the roadway when you're driving slow, and stronger penalties for driving carelessly around maintenance workers, construction workers, tow truck personnel, and recovery workers on our highways. Mr. Speaker, these are just but a few things that we're doing to get Ontario Response. moving, and I have more to say in my supplemental. Supplementary question. Mr. Speaker, thank you for the Minister of Transportation for the very informative response. I know my community of Mississauga and Mills will be happy to hear the, the proposed measures in this bill. It is so important that we are protecting our most vulnerable, our children, and measuring, ensuring that they get to and from the school safely. Increasing fines for drivers who are driving too slow in the left-hand lane will also improve our road safety. I'm also pleased that we intend to better protect maintenance, construction, tow truck and recovery workers from dangerous drivers. I know these measures will help to keep all Ontarians safe while working and commuting. Can the Minister of Transportation tell us more about some of the proposed measures introduced last week? Minister. Thanks again for that question, Mr. Speaker. Not only did we introduce the Ontario Moving Act, we've also initiated a number of regulatory changes that were posted this past week. We propose permitting single occupant motorcycles to use the HOV lanes. We propose to amend Ontario's motorcycle handlebar height restrictions to allow for motorcycles with high-styled handlebars that are in the top of the operator's above the operator's sh shoulders or below while seated. We also make it easier to, for charter buses to travel in Ontario through amendments that would align with requirements under the International Registration Plan. And we're also proposing to make life easier and expand customer choice by exempting people with personal use pickup trucks from the burdensome annual inspections. Mr. Speaker, the Ontario Moving, Getting Ontario Moving Act spells out a number of safety measures that uh, is going to make our roads safer, improve business opportunities, and help the individuals throughout our province. Response. It's unfortunate, Mr. Speaker, that the opposition members voted against this bill without reading it. They're putting the safety of our children at risk, and I hope they, they learn from their mistake and support us in the second reading vote. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The next question, order. The next question, the member for Nickelbelt. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My question is to the Premier. 
Women across Ontario have fought really hard for their reproductive rights. Conservative MPPs joined an anti-choice rally outside Queen's Park just now, and they told the protester, we pledge to fight to make abortion unthinkable in our lifetime. Does the Premier support his MPPs? And the women are Questions to the Premier. Minister of Energy. Refer to the Minister of Energy and Northern Development and Mines. Oh. Thank, th thank you, Mr. Speaker. Of course, uh, we're protecting what matters, Mr. Speaker. We're focused on a health care system that addresses the needs of every person who lives in Ontario. We're concerned, Mr. Speaker, for example, that a job-killing regressive carbon tax would compromise the resources of hospitals and medical clinics across this province and across northern Ontario, Mr. Speaker, to serve the needs of the people of Ontario. Moving forward, Mr. Speaker, we're protecting and investing educa in education, in health care, Mr. Speaker, protecting se seniors, and making making sure that the people of Ontario have the ac access to the health services and programs they deserve. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Supplementary question. Thank you, Speaker. Um, my, I'd like to go back to the Premier, and I failed to see how this had anything to do with uh, the question that I asked. Uh, so the Premier has been less than clear on this issue. He has courted the support of the anti-choice activists, and I'm asking him this morning, will he stand here today and say that he refutes his MPP's comments and support a woman's right to choose? Members, please take your seat. To the Minister of Energy. Mr. Speaker, our priority is protecting what matters most to Ontarians, most to North, Northern Ontario, where sometimes programs and services and access to them can be compromised. We're concerned about a $27 million cut the federal government has made by invoking the job-killing regressive carbon tax on our health care system here in Ontario, Mr. Speaker. We're creating new long-term care beds. We're investing, Mr. Speaker, in all sorts of health care programs that are particularly going to benefit the people of Northern Ontario. And moving forward, we will use every tool at our disposal, Mr. Speaker, to ensure that when it comes to access to health programs and services, particularly for Northern Ontario, Mr. Speaker, as I speak through you to the member from Nickel Belt, we stand together on this side of the House and with our other members over there to ensure that the people of Ontario have the Response. access to health services and programs that they need and deserve no matter where they live in this great, beautiful province, Mr. Speaker. The next question, the member for Sarnia Lambton. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, my question is to the Minister of Training, Colleges and Universities. Speaker, it's clear from the budget 2019 that our government is committed to filling the skills gap so we can make Ontario open for business and open for jobs. We know there are thousands of high-quality jobs in the skilled trades that are left unfilled because of a lack of workers trained for these jobs. These jobs are well-paying, fulfilling career opportunities for our young people. Ontario's employers know that our government is on the right track in making it easier to enter the skilled trades and addressing the skills gap. Can the minister please tell us how our government is listening to job creators by modernizing the skilled trades? Question to the Minister of Training, Colleges and Universities. Thank you, Speaker, and thank you to the member from Sarnia Lambton uh, for the question and his great work on behalf of uh, his riding. <coughs> Speaker, we are hearing from stakeholders across Ontario that our government's actions on the skilled trades are helping more young people enter skilled trades professions. And yesterday I met with the Ontario General Contractors Association who requested that our government develop a government-wide skill strategy, address barriers to entry into the trades, transform the perception of the skilled trades, and create a flexible system for the trades. Speaker, I'm proud to say that in Budget 2019, our government is moving ahead with each of these measures. And I'm looking forward to working with the OGCA to fill, o OGCA, yes, to fill the skills gap and make Ontario open for business. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. 
Point of order, the Minister of Energy, Northern Development and Mines. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to introduce my good friend, Ferg Devins, who's from Kenora, and he's chair of the Bladder Cancer Canada and a bladder cancer survivor himself. This National Register charity is committing, committed to making a difference for patients and their caregivers. I'd like to remind everyone that this month is month of May, Bladder Cancer Awareness Month, and we welcome Ferg Devins to this meeting. Yeah. recognize the Premier on a point of order. I'd like to extend an invitation to those students leaving. Come to my office in 10 minutes and I'll take you on a tour. Okay. <laughs> point of order, the member for Oakville. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Point of order, I'd like to uh, introduce two friends from the riding of Oakville, John and Alicia Thistleway. Welcome to Queen's Park. Thank you. Pursuant to Standing Order 38A, the member for Brampton Centre has given notice of her dissatisfaction with the answer to her question given by the Premier concerning climate change. This matter will be debated Tuesday at 6 p.m. Pursuant to Standing Order 38A, the member for Guelph has given notice of his dissatisfaction with the answer to his question given by the Minister of Finance concerning the old OMB. This matter will be debated Tuesday at 6 p.m. Pursuant to Standing Order 38A, the member for Essex has given notice of his dissatisfaction with the answer to his question given by the Premier concerning police intervention with library members from Niagara West. This matter will be debated Tuesday at 6 p.m. This House stands in recess until 1 p.m.